I have always had a deep personal admiration for Ludwig von Mises, one of the great economists of all time. His book, Human Action, a treatise on economics, while challenging, will bring great intellectual pleasure to anyone who thirsts for truth. Beginners should consider starting with some of his simpler works intended for general audiences. And it was not just Mises's brilliance that moved me, but also his moral courage. Mises adopted Tacitus's motto as his own, Do not give in to evil, but proceed ever more boldly against it. Mises never sought advancement by telling the political class what it wanted to hear. Economics, said Mises, is a challenge to the conceit of those in power. An economist can never be a favorite of autocrats and demagogues. With them, he is always the mischief-maker, and the more they are inwardly convinced that his objections are well-founded, the more they hate him. And the Nazis did hate him, both because he was Jewish and because of his denunciation, in the name of free market economics, of the Nazi economic program. Mises believed in free trade, toleration, and peace, exactly the opposite of the nationalistic, autarkic philosophy of the National Socialists, or Nazis, whose ugly creed grew more and more influential as the 1930s wore on. In 1934, Mises accepted a position as a professor of international economic relations at the University of Geneva's Graduate Institute of International Studies. Four years later, the Nazis destroyed his papers and library back in Vienna. By 1940, with Switzerland surrounded by countries under the control of the Axis powers, Mises fled to the United States. When he arrived, he had no teaching position waiting for him, and no resources, and he spoke no English. He was 60. By that point, he had produced some of his most enduring work. In addition to writing two major treatises, the theory of money and credit and socialism, he had published a vast array of influential articles and mentored countless young students who went on to be the finest economic thinkers of their day. And yet, against all odds, still more was to come after his 60th year, when his personal and professional situation seemed so dire. In the 1940s, he released Omnipotent Government, his study of the Nazi phenomenon, bureaucracy, and his magnum opus, Human Action, a 900-page work he wrote in English, a language of which he had not known one word in 1940. The 1950s saw the release of the fourth of his great treatises, Theory and History. Mises continued to swim against the tide until his death in 1973, teaching and theorizing about freedom at a time when Keynesian and other kinds of central planners dominated academic economics. While most of those names are now forgotten, Mises and his legacy live on, as his work influences new generations of intellectuals who see through the lies of planners and other tyrants and understand the value of liberty.